Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? I'm gonna turn my car off. Um, so I'm going to just give you a quick kind of rundown on um, gut health today. Um, I'm in my car. I just left my little boy's Easter party. It was so fun. And then, so I'm just going to do some errands, but I wanted to make this quick uh, video real quick to touch on gut health. Um, this can be complicated and involved. So I'm just going to try to give you a quick overview. So, um, you guys kind of understand more if you don't already where leaky gut, gut health, gut intelligence, pre and probiotics, and um, pesticides and toxins and all that can come into play when we're talking about bloating, um, malnutrition, fat loss, re weight loss, resistance, fat loss, and all that. So first I'm going to try to give you a super quick lesson on the gut and how the gut works. So basically your, when we say gut, we mean your whole intestines um, your small and large intestines, and it is made up of membranes and cells and all that good stuff. So your gut is supposed to be, imagine it, it's supposed to be as tight as like some Lululemon tights or some tight pantyhose. That's how tight your gut is supposed, the membranes of your gut are supposed to be. So when you eat food, it stays in your gut and then it's kind of slowly absorbed as digestion takes place. Um, but what is happening to many of us um, that has been discovered, we're developing what we call leaky gut. So leaky gut, imagine that as your gut lining instead of that tight mesh, Lululemon type tight, it's more like a fishnet stocking. So the membranes are opening up and all this and things are leaking into your system that aren't supposed to aren't supposed to be. And when you eat, we're talking about toxins, um, the chemicals in our food and, you know, even the good stuff like fiber, like things that aren't supposed to be leaking into our bloodstream and getting into our system is now and it's causing us problems like bloat. And um, it can even, it's even been shown to sh cause some cognitive problems like um, uh, confusion, you know, short term memory, even asthma, they're linking to it because it's getting into our bloodstream and causing an inflammation response. And so they're thinking some, a lot of the anti, the, um, the autoimmune and inflammatory issues that people are having can be um, from the leaky gut syndrome. So here's the thing. This is kind of new. Um, I mean, not new, but people are just starting to become aware of these problems. And I'll go into that in a minute. But the thing is, um, a lot of people might have, actually they think most people do have some form of leaky gut. It's just that a lot of us don't know it because we don't think we're having a lot of symptoms. If you're not having serious stomach issues like pain or um, diarrhea or you know symptoms that make you think you have irritable, irritable bowel or Crohn's, you think you're fine. But what we're finding is a lot of us are having symptoms of inflammatory issues that we're not realizing that it could be our guts and so that's where this whole new focus I mean you've probably if you're on the internet at all or listening to the news you're probably hearing more about this whole like gut health leaky gut that's where it's all coming from this all this is sort of coming to light so here's you know then if you're like me and you're curious like well why why is this all starting so here's what happened in 19 and during Vietnam in the 1970s um, there was Agent Orange, right? You know, the chemical that they sprayed on the fields to kill the weeds, I mean, the, the plants and everything so that our soldiers could see the enemy more clearly. They just basically killed all the fields so that, you know, they could see everybody. 
So after Vietnam, they had all this excess chemical that they created for war warfare, and they were trying to figure out what to do with it. Well, <clears throat> that is when they um, developed Roundup, or um, pest, you know, the many of the pesticides um, from that chemical. It's called glyphosate. Glyphosate? Glyphosate. Yeah, glyphosate. And that's when they developed Roundup. So that in 1975 is when all most of the farms, well, I won't say most because I'm not sure, but um, fought, that's when using pesticides became uh, very widely used because um, it was developed in 1975. So ever since then, this glyphosate has been on our crops, in our soil, in the air, getting in our water, everywhere in the United States. And also now um, they're also seeing problems in Canada and Australia. I mean, I'm sorry, not Canada. Sorry, Canada. And China and Australia also use a large amount of Roundup and glyphosate uh, type pesticides. So um, what they're finding is that chemical glyphosate is we is it's doing two things it is um killing off it almost acts like an antibiotic in a bad way it's killing off all the good bacteria in our gut and it's um so it's it's a culprit in the process of causing us that leaky gut so it's um part of the problem in taking us from that tight gut to causing those membranes to open up and um, and cause the leaky gut. So there's the first problem. And the second problem, I mean, the first problem is just that chemical in general. And even in organic fields, it's probably still in the soil and we're getting it through the air and the water and everything else. So they've found um, when they're testing people for this chemical, it's pretty much in us. It's kind of in everybody they're finding. Um, so that's the first problem. And then the second problem is um, our biomes and our guts are different now because over all these years, they our good bacteria is being killed off. And I know you've heard stuff about that, like um, the whole probiotic thing and, you know, doctors prescribing probiotics and things. Our doctors just realizing like we've got to start with the gut. We've got to get the good bacteria gut going and it affects like your whole body. So, boom. Does that make sense? So that's kind of like a good little overview of this whole thing, you know, so when you hear about gut health and stuff, it'll make more sense to you, I hope. So what do we do about it? So we, um, one of the, oh, what's his name? I think Dr. Zach Bush or something, but one of one of the solutions, according to him and, um, you know, other things that I've read, is we, uh, obviously, you're going to try not to eat heavy pesticide food, which is really, you know, hard because it's everywhere. But you can, of course, eat organic whenever you can because it'll have less glyphosate in it. And, um, but two interesting ways to com combat this is... Um, probiotics, of course, because you're going to add some good bacteria back in your gut. Um, but even that kind of isn't enough because you just get like, like I think he said, I think I read, and this might be, don't take this for fact, do your own research, but I think he said like, um, we're supposed to have like 50,000 different microbes in our, in our gut and our biome. And we might only have like five or something. That's a huge generalization. So when you're taking probiotics, um, that's good, but it's it's only one kind of species of um, bacteria, and we need like a ton. We wiped them all out with this um, chemical in our environment. So um, one of the things he says that you that the best thing you can do is, then this is going to sound weird, but go, but garden get go out in the soil because a lot of this um, the good bacteria is in our environment 
And um, one of the shifts we think we're going to see is the importance of um, not just being out in nature, but but embracing community and diversity and realizing like we need to get our hands dirty. We cannot be afraid of germs anymore. We need all, oops, we need all the bacterias that are in our world. So um, one of the things he actually said to do is go outside and play in the dirt, pull weeds. Cause even though the glyphosate is in the soil, so is all a huge amount of diverse good bacteria. So that's one of the ways when you pull a weed, this is the way he explained it. When you pull a weed, the bacteria and stuff in the soil kind of poofs into the air and you breathe it in. So that's, and go into different environments, you know, like if you can travel and you go to all these exotic places, like if you go to somewhere where there's an old waterfall, you're actually breathing in and touching and getting some of that different bacteria into your body that you weren't exposed to before and that's a good thing so that's one of the ways um you know he's just saying our environment is actually our best friend we need to stop stop using antibacterial soap stop being so worried about being sterile and clean we actually need the bacteria all around our world to help us rebuild our gut biomes. <laughs> so isn't this interesting stuff? Um, let's, oh, hi guys. My endocrinologist has me taking probiotics. Awesome. I take those too. Yes. Yay. That's a good start. That is a very good start. So yeah, I mean, it's getting so popular now. I think, I think it's getting the whole, the whole health community is realizing that so much of our health now starts in the gut. So, um, so anyway, that was, but the interesting part to me that I learned was actually like taking a probiotic isn't quite enough because you're just getting that one form of good bacteria when we actually need thousands. So we really do need to try to get it in different ways. And one of the funny things he said is we should all be like the French people and like go around kissing everybody because every person, every place, every soil you touch will give you some different you can think of them as probiotics. We'll give you some different bacteria that you can get into your body to start building your gut biome. So, does that make sense, guys? I think it's awesome. It's so interesting. It's all so interesting. So, um, that is kind of a huge overview. I mean, there's a lot of little interesting facts and statistics and things and all that that can get a little complex, but... Um, that's just a nice big overview. I mean, other things, for instance, that you can do is, um, that's where you see people talk about fermented food and, um, what is it called? I don't take this, but is it kombucha or com kombucha and kefir? Um, you might've heard people talk about that. That's all that stuff is an effort to get that good bacteria back in your gut. And, um, so the reason I'm bringing this up in this group is because a lot of people don't realize that you probably have a little leaky gut and that can be a cause of um, some of your weight loss resistance and the bloating that constantly happens. Like for instance, a lot of people, even when you're eating good foods like kale, um, kale's one of my favorite vegetables, it's a major superfood. Even when you eat good foods um, like kale, if you with a little bit of the leaky gut, you still have that crossover of things in the kale that should not be in your bloodstream. Like the fiber is getting into your bloodstream before it's supposed to and causing you to have an inflammatory response and bloating. Um, you know, it causes basically a high level of inflammation in your body. So crazy interesting stuff. And, um, yeah, and that's where a lot of the problems come into play. So, fun. So, I hope you guys thought this was interesting. Our immune system is our gut. Yes. Chandra, that's all. Your doctor is awesome. Because um, a lot of doctors, 
I wash my hands at least 500 times a day. Oh, I know. I know. Try not to use... Are you using antibacterial soap, Sherry? Do you have to? Um, cause that can be really rough on your hands anyway. Um, but Chandra, that is awesome because a lot of the medical community isn't quite on board yet with this whole, you know, everything coming from the gut thing. And um, one of the cool statistics that one of the interviews I was listening to said was, it takes 70 years after a scientific discovery for it to get accepted and used and and to get into the medical community. It can take that long just because, you know, like things are new at first and it takes a lot more research and study and all that. And, you know, it, things are slow to get to get going. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think this is a crazy little interesting tidbit, but one of them said, um, and I bet a lot of your moms, so you probably know this, you know, when you have a C-section and your baby's pulled out of your uterus, um, they don't go through the vaginal canal. So they don't get exposed to all the vaginal bacteria. And, um, and he was just saying, so that a vaginal, a vaginal birth baby has a whole different gut biome already right at birth than a sterile baby that's born from C-section. And those sterile babies can tend to um, kind of get sicker early in life because they're immediately exposed to just the hospital bacteria, which might be like strep or staph, you know, and all that stuff. And they don't have the good bacteria in their gut to fight it off. So it's so interesting. But um, he was, this is Dr. Bush, I think. But he was saying that he thinks and this will be, I mean, I'm sure this will happen because of all the stuff they're learning, but he thinks a normal practice will be, and he's so sorry it isn't already, that when a baby is born by C-section, they'll just go ahead and take a swab of the mom's vaginal canal and swab the baby with it to get the baby all that bacteria that it, that it's supposed to. So I thought that was so fascinating. Um, there's so much stuff to learn. Yes, for sure. And my hands hurt bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, Sherry, I don't know if you know, but I was a nurse for one, well, once a nurse, always a nurse, right? So many years. And yeah, that, all that hand washing and antibacterial soap. Chandra, I have bad stomach problems. So he has me taking probiotics because I'm always having to be on some type of antibiotics. So he wants me to replace what I'm losing. Yes. Chandra, that is, um, you are, you sound like leaky gut already. If you have stomach problems, you're taking proto because why are you always on antibiotics? Because that's that's interesting because that's what they're saying is um, when you have this leaky gut syndrome, your body is constantly in an inflammation mode depending on how bad it is. Um, and when you're in this conflict, constant state of inflammation, you're more prone to get sick because it's such a hit on your immune system. It's always working, working, working. So, um, Chandra, I, if you have not heard about leaky gut and this stuff before, I would look it up if I were you because you can f maybe find some ways to help yourself. I mean, it sounds like your doctor's got you on the right track so, so far. Their probiotics are awesome. But there's some other stuff you can do too, like, you know, go get dirty. And I actually have my own garden, guys. I do grow my food from home, not all of it, obviously. But if that's something you guys are interested in, I can um, teach you how to start a little home garden. I have a little organic garden that I do. It's really fun and super easy. I can teach you how I mix my soil and I don't just go buy soil. I make it, I make my own mix and stuff. So if that's something you guys are interested in, let me know. That would be another fun video. Um, but Chandra, I thought of something else for you. Um, so the probiotics, get out and get some bacteria in your body, go get dirty. Um, oh, there's something, oh, the, the krauts, the, um, fermented food. You could try that to get more bacteria in your body. And, um, oh, what was something else? I'll get back to you, Chandra, but I just, yeah, like I just wanted this to be an overview, but if, if this is interesting, you guys, 
Oh, and Sherry has IBS. Yes. So this is good. This is, I mean, that's not good, but this is a need. This is a need to understand this stuff. And, um, I think, you know, if you guys haven't researched this yet, let's do it and we can probably help you, um, maybe help with some of those symptoms. So Chandra and Sherry, I'll definitely get back with you. I'll probably make another video, but I can't, I'm forgetting something cause I'm on camera and I'm like, on, I don't want to just sit and be like, oh, let me remember. It was um, getting dirty, the probiotics, the fermented food. Oh, I thought of it. Duh. It totally ties into intermittent fasting. So I will, I'll, I can't quite remember how it exactly ties in, but when you intermittent fast and you give your body a little bit of a break, from like say your pancreas constantly secreting insulin every time you eat um every all when you're eating constantly every time you're eating you're causing your body to work and that can s cause some inflammation so anything that you can do to decrease your body inflammation will help decrease some of those um leaky gut type symptoms and so that's also where intermittent fasting can come in is because you give your body a whole like 16 hour break. You give your pancreas a break. You give your body basically a rest to de-inflame, to kind of calm down and the inflammation goes down. So it's all fascinating stuff, guys. If you want to learn it, I'm with you. I am such a nerd. Like I said, I love reading about this stuff. So when I, knowing that you, Sherry, you and Chandra have some of these, some sort of um, gut issues. Um, I will, when I do my video on intermittent fasting, I'll make sure and study more on that and tie that in for you. Okay. I mean, I just gave you a little overview, but I'll, um, get some of the nitty gritty info and tie that in for you and see if there's some different, um, different things I find and read that can specifically help with that. So, okay, guys, I think I've talked enough. Good, Sherry. Awesome. I love this stuff, too. It's so fascinating. Um, so, and you guys share, too. I don't know if you're reading about any of this stuff on your own, but I think, why did I start getting into it? I don't know. I just, I've just, I'm just so into um, nutrition and, and stuff, and I just kept reading all this stuff about, like, gut health and leaky gut, and I'm like, what the heck is this? I need to learn more about this. And then when I started learning about when it started in the 70s, I was like, oh my God, it makes so much sense. And like seeing the research and this is, oh, this is another tidbit I learned that was so sad. It's so amazing to me, all the things you don't know. Like when I was reading and researching about this stuff, I learned that, and you guys might know this, um, I learned that there are funds and grants set up for the kids who were born from the fathers that were in Vietnam and exposed to Agent Orange, which is the Roundup, the glyphosate, because these kids were being born with hand and foot malformations. So they, they knew right away that, I mean, this is such a toxic chemical, the glyphosate, and it was causing birth defects not directly from the mom, but from the dad, which is kind of unusual. Usually, you know, we think the birth defects have, you know, are the mom, but it actually got transferred through the dad. So they, the, the glyphosate or the Agent Orange was um, affecting the dad's DNA to the point that it was um, altering his sperm somehow and passing it on through his sperm to the development of the baby. So, nutso. So that was interesting. I was like, what? How did I not know that? Like, there's so much stuff you realize you don't know. And actually, there's a good kind of um, coach friend on my bigger team that she actually has um, a malformed foot. And I remember now that after I read that, I'm like, oh my God, I remember Melissa mentioning that one time. So, crazy stuff. Um, so anyway, what was I getting at there? I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I lost it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, once I started getting into it more and learning about it, I'm like, oh my gosh. And basically, 
we all have um, some form of leaky. Oh, that's this is what I was gonna say. Another interesting tidbit since y'all are still on. Hey, Trina. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people will say like, well, you know, your grandparents will say like, well, I ate anything and everything, and I just eat like. What's wrong with you people with your inflammation and leaky gut and bloating and you can't lose weight? Like, what's wrong with you people? Well, they're realizing now it's our intestines, it's our gut. It's all of our, the, the toxins and foods that are not supposed to be leaking through are leaking through and causing this inflammatory process in your body. And our grandparents didn't have that. They had the nice, tight Lululemon guts. So, because this wasn't introduced into our culture until 1975, so we're like the human guinea pigs. So just we're the guinea pigs going through this. Our generation are the ones that we're seeing the effect of what we did. Um, yeah, and so what we can do is try our best not to eat it, which is really hard because, like I said, U.S., China, Australia. It's all in our soils. Um, we can try our best not to eat it by getting our food from other countries um, and trying to get like organic food from other countries, clean food from other countries that don't use it like Peru and um, you know, there's definitely some other exotic places that have clean soil that's never been tainted where you can buy some food from there which that's why I love Shakeology. Um, you know, this is, I'm not plugging Shakeology, but that is why I love this stuff because they, and that's why it's so expensive because they go to these other countries to get all these superfoods and ingredients that can help repair our um, gut and at least give us something clean to eat. Um, so, so yeah, I think I've talked enough. Hi, Jacinta. <laughs> So, all right, guys, thank you so much for hopping on. I hope this wasn't, like, too scientific and overblown your mind over the top. I never know because I'm such a nerd and I'm, like, a, you know, I have my master's in science and nursing. And I've always been into, like, the research and the study. So, sometimes I feel like no one cares about the this stuff. So I'm glad the few of you on said you liked this info and we'll just keep going and learn more and I'll get more into some more action steps, more than what we've talked about already that you can do about it. Cause that's obviously what I want to know too. Okay guys, bye. Have a great day.